I added a few things. Let's now go over the tool. In the type properties, let's define the input and output names. In the first label is a curve. The second is a terrain. Here we have the first connection of the curve, but in Unreal we're going to edit it. In the second we have the terrain. In Unreal we're going to connect it to the landscape. Here we have the reverse option. We don't always need it, but I'm going to leave it for now. This is a sample curve we're going to work on. This is a reshape. This is a resample. Then we put a reshape to add more divisions. Here I split the tool for two cases. One would go to the proxy objects and one for the assets. In both of them, we have the scatter or scatter and align options. And we can pick which one works better in our case. When we use scatter and align, it's easier to have the assets in many scales without going into each other. In this example, I added another functionality to have the assets aligned with the terrain. Here we see that everything is pointing up. We can change it in the orientation like we saw before, but in some cases, we would like to have them aligned with the surface. So I added the functionality here, aligned with the terrain, and then we can have the assets point to the surface normal. It depends on the type of asset we want to use. We can either have the assets point up or with the surface normal, depending on the case. And once it's defined, we can decide on that in Unreal. Let's continue in Houdini. Here we have the scattered points, and here is a terrain projection. It takes the input that in Unreal we put it as a landscape. I added another functionality, it's not a must. I took the height field and cropped it around the area that we need to do the projection. So this is a projection. These are the points. It creates a bounding box around them. And then it crops the area to where the points are in order to save resources. Like this. Here's the ray. Here's where the projection happens. Here I put as an option to do the point intersection normal. It gives the point the direction of the surface. I put it here. Here I just replaced the normal orientation to have it aligned in Unreal, point up, not sideways. The switch as a toggle is also connected. This is for projecting on the terrain, and this is for the orientation. Then it goes through the method that we saw before. Instead of the assets, because we have them on different IDs, I split each one by the IDs. I split each one by the IDs. And for each ID, I gave the option of the Unreal instance. Those are now blank and will be filled in Unreal. That's how we drag the assets right in. You can also have default assets if you are doing it for a specific project. Then it merges everything together. I gave another option of embedding the assets in the ground. Here the switch that select between the assets or the proxy objects. And that's our tool. Now we're going to see how to finish the tool and use it. After we imported the tool, we drag it to our scene. We press on it and then we get the initial curve. We can move the points. When we press Alt and Move, we duplicate the point. Alt and Move. This is how we create the initial shape. We're still with our proxies. We're going to replace them with our assets soon. We can look at the point pattern here. In order to project it on the terrain, we need to define what we want to project it on. We can scroll down. Here we can see the world input. That's where we connect the landscape or the floor. And we need to tell it what to select. So we do here start selection. 
we can either select an element like this or we can select the whole landscape use current and then we can see the object it's going to project on well now it's not projected yet we go up we go up in our tool and check the project on terrain and now our assets sit on the terrain we can still pick the scattering mode either regular scatter of points or scatter in a line now let's add our assets we press here on assets here we have the tabs type one two or three in each one of the types we can put as many assets as we want and we can control the size and the weight in the overall amount let's start with the trees we just drag and drop it here let's add a few more trees and press the plus button let's take this one and this one for example you can see that they are being scattered as part of our pattern if we want to change it we can go up and change the element size or change the type like we did before let's say patches or we can place them randomly let's do noise for now let's add the rocks now we can go to type 2 let's add two types of nodes we can do as many as we want here's the first one Here's the second one. We can either take an open shape and just spin it around itself, or we can check. And if we have a closed version, we can rotate it all over. Let's go back to our tool. Select the second one. In the third type, we can add some vegetation. And we can play now we can play with our sizes. Here. In our rocks we can make them bigger. If we want more, we can just go back to the scatter, pick the method that we want, and add as many as we want. We can do very little or a lot. Now we see that everything is very straight. That was in type 1. Here are all the assets that are being scattered in this area. And we can just make them rotate a bit more. So we have a spin min and max. Let's just tell them to spin to the maximum. To the maximum, and we see that everything is different now. We can lower the amount a bit. And we can play with the scale. We can play with the P scale for uniform scale, or we can randomize by each axis. Let's do that for the rocks as well. That was the area of the rocks. We can randomize size. Let's do it also non-uniformly. We can spin them around their axis, but we can also rotate them in all directions. And I think we can lower the amount a bit. And maybe even make them a bit smaller. This is like a global scale. And this is how we can spread things in different patterns. If we want to integrate it a bit better, we can go to the rocks and add some vegetation and add some rocks instead of trees. And that can make things a bit more organic.
let's add here a plant we can see them here we can lower the amount and make them a bit bigger Let's add some fallen trees. And let's add some pebbles here. This version of the vegetation and rocks, I just want it to spin around itself and not in 3D. And this rock is open, so we don't want to see the inside. We can add a bit more. I added the functionality here, aligned with the terrain. And here's a function to align it with the terrain. Obviously with the trees, we wouldn't want to align them with the landscape, but sometimes we would have assets that we would like to have them aligned with the terrain. Sometimes you would like to project your assets on the terrain and sometimes to align them. It depends on your needs. Let's see a few examples of using the tool.